Welcome back, everybody. So to be able to uh, define uh, how is that we're going to assign truth values to these formulas, we first need a concept that is going to be in our way uh, called uh, the concept of free variables. So let's, uh, let me start with a question. Let's consider this sentence right here. The sentence is there exists an x such that x stars x equals y. And I ask you whether that's true on the structure of the rationals where the operation star is being interpreted as plus. Well, you'll say, yes, uh, there exists uh, such an S. Just make X equals uh, Y over 2 in the rationals, and you'll always have that X plus X equals Y. So, okay, we'll say, you would say, um, well, yes, this sounds true. Uh, let me just look at another example. What about the same, the same formula? But now look at it in the integers. Is this true? Um, and now, I mean, again, x will have to be y over 2. But in the integers, not every number is divisible by 2, right? So the answer here is going to be um, yes if y is even. And it's going to be no if y is odd. So it's not an obvious question, it depends on what uh, y is, right? Uh, what about on the reals? Well, in the reals, it's uh, true again. I guess I, I, I mean it's more interesting here if you put uh, times. Let's put times here just to ask, ask a more meaningful question. Is this is true with interpreting by star? Well, here you will need x will have to be the square root of uh, y. So you will say that yes, if y is positive, and no, if y is negative, right? If you are, if you stay inside the reals, uh, negative numbers don't have square roots. So this is not a well-posed question. And then this this variable y here that is kind of free, we can assign it. It could be positive. The formula doesn't tell us anything about what it is. It's uh, this is what is called a free variable. So this y here that is not bound to anything is a free variable. So let's look at that in more detail. So a free variable is one that is not bound to any quantifier. Let me give you an example to see what that means. Um, so suppose you have a formula of the form. So suppose you have a formula of the form uh, there exists an x such that x plus y equals zero, and for every w x plus w equals y, uh, and for every w w uh, less than y. What's going on in this formula? In this formula, uh, the variable x right here and x right here is bound to this quantifier. Right? So they are bound to that quantifier. Right? So when we say for every x here, we mean the same x that shows up there. The w that appears here another w that appears here is bound to this quantifier and the w that appears here is not bound to that same quantifier is bound to this quantifier right when we say for every w for every w uh, x plus w equals y here we mean this w here refers to the one that we're saying here and this is for every other w here is not the same w it's for every other w these things happen Right, so that's how those are bound. And then we have y. y here, here, and here is free. So it's not bound to any quantifier. OK? So that's the same uh, in this case. y up here, and here, and here, that variable is free, while the x is bound to that existential right there. When we say exist x, we mean 
that, that x refers to that extension. And then we're gonna when we have a well formed formula that has no free variables, we're gonna call that a sentence. Okay, so if you go back, if you go back to the previous video uh, and we were asking whether these things are true or false on the different structures, this one here are sentences, right? Because we have the y is bound to this y, x is bound to this x, and everybody's bounded. So there are no free variables. That means this one up here is a sentence. Sentence have no free variables, and in that case, we have no problem figuring out whether the sentence was true or false. Because since the variables are bound, we know that they mean we know what they mean by when we write x and y. Um, so there were no free variables. In the case of free variables, that's when we cannot give a direct answer because the answer is going to depend on the value of the free variable, right? Uh, So in this case, we couldn't give a direct answer because the answer to whether these things are true or false depends on the value of y. If we need the value of y to tell whether these are true or false, it's not just plain. So if you know a sentence, it's not that immediate to tell if something is true or false. Um, okay, so let me, uh, let's define formally the set of free variables. And let's use what we learned in the previous video about induction and recursion to define this. Okay, so the, the well-formed formulas can be defined. They are all strings of symbols, and they can define as a closure as a closure of these operations of putting the ands, the formulas together by ands, by connectives, ors, implies, if and only if. And we have a bunch of uh, operations that correspond to the connectives that make bigger and bigger strings of symbols. Right. So we need to define. Um, the set of free variables using essentially induction. So first, we want to define a function. Um, let's call it var that goes from the set of terms to the set of variables. Okay, so and we do it by recursion, like the way we did in the previous video. So we have to say depending on the case of the term. So if you have a variable, so if uh, v is a variable, then we're going to define bar, let's do it in red, of the term that has only v by itself, uh, is going to be v. Right, that's the only variable that shows up in that very simple term that only contains a variable. Okay, so if C is a constant symbol, then we're going to define var of C. Well, C is just a constant by itself. It has no variables inside, so that's going to be the empty set. Okay, a set that has nothing inside. There are no variables inside a constant. And uh, if uh, F is a function symbol, let's say k are function symbol, then we have a term, we can have terms that are of the form f applied to a bunch of terms, t1 up to tk. So k terms because f has added tk. So that means it, you apply to k terms. And these terms were built before. So these are terms that are already strings of symbols that were built before. Um, and now since we're defining this function by recursion, we can assume that we know how to calculate the variable function on the previous terms, okay? So we can use what we know about var in the previous terms and what are gonna be the variables in these new terms. Well, it's gonna be the union of the variables among all these previous terms. So it's gonna be the terms that we have in T1, union the terms, sorry, the variables that we have in T1, union the variables that we have in T2, union all the way the variables that we have in Tk. Okay, so that's an example of a definition by uh, recursion. So we are defining 
the variables on this new term that we build using f using the set of variables that we knew from the previous case. All right, very good. So now we want to define um, a function, a free variable that goes from the formulas to the variables, set of variables. So I should clarify here, it's not, it doesn't go to the variables, it goes to sets of variables. So to the power set of the variables. So the output is going to be a set of variables. The same in the previous case, the output is a set of variables, right? So given a term, the output is a set of variables, all the variables that show up in the term. Now, given a formula, we want uh, all the variables that are free in the formula, not the ones that show up, we want just the ones that are free, okay? So how are we gonna define that? And again, we're gonna use recursion, and then we have to look at the different situations. So if you have a uh, first uh, um, formula of the uh, atomic formula of the form R of T1, Tk, where R is a relation of R to Tk, then this is an atomic formula, has no quantifier, so all the variables are free. So what is this gonna be? This is gonna be the variables uh, of T1 union dot 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 the variables of Tk. So essentially, I just put in all the variables that show up anywhere in this uh, atomic formula, which is a union of all the variables that show up anywhere in the terms that are inside. Um, what now if you have a free variable of, oh, sorry, free variables of something of the form phi and psi? Well, it's the same as the free variables that are in phi and the free variables that are inside, right? There is nothing to it. In phi and union, the free variables inside. Um, because it's just a union. If you have uh, or implies uh, if and only if, not, same thing. We just take the union of the previous ones. There is nothing to it. So they are not changing the free variables. Disconnected. But if we have something, the free variables of for every x phi. Now, if x was a free variable inside phi, now it becomes bound by this for every x. Right? So let's look at an example. If, if here... Um, we didn't have for every x right there. Now, x was a free variable in here and in here. It would be a free variable of this formula. But after we put the for every x, that x becomes bound and it's not a free variable anymore. So we have to remove it. Once we put the for every x, we have to remove it from the set of free variables. So what we get here is that this is the free variables of phi minus the variable x. Okay? And the same is true if you have uh, there exists an x phi. Free variables of phi minus the variable x. Okay? So that's how we define the set of free variables by recursion okay so first we define the variables in the terms it is all the variables that show up then when we have atomic formulas all the variables that show up when we have connected we just take unions and when we quantify them these variables become bound and we remove them from the set of free variables so now we have a formal definition for this so essentially when we say here um, formula without free variables what we mean now we have a formal definition we mean that the set of free variables is the empty set. So no free variables. And those are the ones that are called sentences. Okay, so next video we continue with uh, variable assignments.